Hey guys, so I wanted to give you a quick update on the video I did last week about our baby's anatomy scan and the abnormalities that they detected. I talked a little bit about what the doctor said to me and the fact that it was an unpleasant experience there, but this time I wanted to update you on the results of the blood tests I got and what's kind of going on. Also, I was able to figure out exactly what these things meant just by doing my own research, what they were. Obviously, I was like just Googling things like crazy after I got this news. The day I recorded the video was just a couple hours after I had seen the doctor and I was still really worried. I was really nervous and scared about what these things could mean. Like I said in the last video, towards the end, they called me the next day and they said they would do a blood test for me. That way I'd be able to get the test done a lot sooner. I really wanted that to make sure everything, you know, just to see what this meant. So I went in and I had the test done. I waited eight days to get the results of those tests and I got them yesterday. They tested for trisomy 18, trisomy 21, and trisomy 13. And the tests came back normal, so it was really, awesome, amazing, wonderful news. This was a blood test. It wasn't an amniotic fluid test. I know that these chromosomal disorders can often have a lot of other physical symptoms or abnormalities, which the baby didn't have. So the only things that came up on the ultrasound that showed it's abnormal were the choroid plexus cysts um, and the EIF, which is I actually made notes because I wanted to share some information with you and I got all of this information online once I got the confirmation of exactly what these things were that they found in the ultrasound from a different doctor. They sent me all the scans that they did that day. These are the choroid plexus cysts that they found in her brain and this is the EIF and they actually have a little clip of that that they sent me um, in the heart. These are the two abnormalities they found. These are called soft markers and they can basically be very mild indicators or links to chromosomal disorders like Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome. I wanted to thank you all for being so supportive and so kind and positive and uplifting and it just it made me feel so good it made us feel good Wayne and I both because we were really worried and just to feel like we had people that cared like meant it meant so much so I just want to thank you all who reached out to us for the messages and the comments and the kind things that you said and the support because it was really really nice and I'm very thankful for that. So I really wanted to make this video to update you about the situation and what, where we're at now. So the second part of the video I'm just going to be giving you some like information and facts about what these things are. Also I found a new doctor. I was recommended actually a handful of doctors and I did look into them. I ended up going with a doctor who wasn't too far from me and had really great reviews. I had a friend recommend him. He delivered, I think, four of her babies. So I decided to go with him for now. There's a chance we will be possibly moving in the next few months. And I was also considering going with a midwife, but for now I have this doctor. I have to get my medical records from my previous doctor's office and that can take a couple weeks. I have an appointment to meet with him in the next two to three weeks. I think they're gonna do a follow-up ultrasound to check the cysts in the brain, the EIF, and to check and see if they're still there. But I'll know more when I meet with, with my new doctor. Let me explain a little bit about what these things are. EIF, it stands for Echogenic Intracardiac Focus. And what that is, is a calcification or buildup of calcium in the muscle of the heart. Usually it's in the left ventricle, but it can be in the right ventricle or it can be in both, but it's usually just found in the left ventricle, which is what our baby had. It occurs in three to five percent of normal pregnancies, like three to five percent of healthy normal babies have an EIF. And the EIF is linked to trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome. And the reason, gosh, I hope it's not too loud. There's a storm coming in and I have my window down. It's starting to sprinkle and there's like 
it's windy, but oh, it's too hot. And I'm out here in my truck because everybody's inside. It's really loud this time of day. It's much quieter out here, but it's really hot. So yeah, I have to have the window down. Where was I? Okay, and so I think it was 18 to 20 something percent of babies with Down syndrome have an EIF. So that's the reason it's a soft marker for that. The next thing, the chorid sex, <laughs> the chorid plexus cysts. This occurs in one to three percent of normal pregnancies. Again, normal meaning the baby doesn't have any um, abnormalities or chromosomal disorders. Okay, so it is a cyst that occurs in the choroid plexus of the brain. The choroid plexus part of the brain is responsible for producing the fluid that surrounds the brain and the spinal column. It can be a soft marker for trisomy 18, which is also known as Edwards syndrome, and trisomy 13. The reason for that is because 30 to 50 percent of babies with trisomy 18 have choroid plexus cysts in the brain. But in trisomy 18, there are usually, if not always, other physical indicators that show up in the ultrasound. So our baby had no other signs of these these chromosomal abnormalities or disorders. That paired with the blood test, I mean, there's pretty much no chance or extremely low chance that our baby will have any of these disorders. So the cyst itself is created when some of that fluid that's created by the choroid plexus becomes trapped like a bubble in the brain. This usually resolves on its own by the third trimester. These are the cysts that were in our baby's brain and also I know that when there's more than one cyst or if they're larger or there's multiples it can also be a cause for concern but we'll just have to see what her status is when we go get the next ultrasound. I know this is really kind of choppy and all over the place and I'm sorry I'm trying to quickly do this before I run out of light the sun's setting and it's super cloudy and as I've been sitting here the storm is coming and there's lightning like it just started happening while I was sitting here within the last 15 minutes so <laughs> just trying to hurry through this. I think I've covered pretty much everything. I was going to give you the quick stats. All of these conditions are considered rare. One out of 700 babies are born with trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome. Uh, one out of, I read one out of 3,000 and I've read one out of 5,000 for trisomy 18. I'm not sure which is more accurate. It's very rare. And trisomy 13 is even more rare, one out of 16,000 births. I have a brother with down syndrome. We're 10 years apart, but in my mind, this is all very possible. I mean, of course, people have babies that are born with these disorders, and I just, it's made me so thankful for the two healthy kids that I do have, and so grateful and thankful that our baby appears to be healthy and developing properly, and that these two abnormalities are actually often considered normal variants even though they only happen in three percent or so of normal pregnancies it's still considered normal so the storm is really this is it right above me there coming in it's starting to get windy i better hurry and wrap this up but i just i wanted to thank you all so much for your support and your positivity and for checking in on us it just means so much more than you know because oh my gosh the uncertainty that comes with it when you have no clue what these things are what they mean when you hear cysts in the brain and I've never heard of this I've, I've had two babies and I've had ultrasounds and I've never had anything like this come up so to me, this was very foreign. I had no idea what it meant. I had so much anxiety. I was so worried, as you probably know if you saw my other video. I am so grateful. I feel so much better knowing that these things will likely resolve themselves and that the baby otherwise is healthy. She's getting really big. I'm almost, I'm 21 weeks tomorrow. So anyways, I wanted to give you guys that update. I wanted to let you know. I just found out yesterday that the blood test came back normal. So that's the, the news we were hoping for. I've read and heard some things about 
level two ultrasounds. I don't know what that is, but it seems like it's a common thing. I guess if they have more reason to worry, I'm not really sure. I'll learn more when I see my new doctor. So yeah, baby is doing good. She is active as can be. Oh, and they were able to confirm that gender we've had one gender ultrasound, another gender ultrasound, and the blood test confirmed that this baby is a girl. So that, there's really no doubt there at this point. <laughs> now we just have to think of a name for her. Back to, <sighs> I can breathe, like sigh of relief. The doctor probably could have given me a little bit more peace of mind while I was there. I'm just trying to let that go and move on. Obviously she wasn't the doctor for me. And I'm gonna just hope that I have a better experience with this next person and I'm sure that I will if my friend is recommending him so strongly. Let me know if you have any questions or anything at all i love that you guys comment and interact i really like that so i guess i better go in since there's a lightning storm coming so thank you guys love you bye